Hello guys and welcome to this week's tutorial on ProRPA.com. Today we'll be talking about control room. So you know when we talk about in layman terms about control room a picture of you know several engineers working on uh, different computers um, and you know like managing or monitoring some system like a picture of a NASA headquarters pretty much portrays in our picture in, in our heads right like like a control room for a police a control room is like oh how is everything going on in the city right for a NASA that I, the example that I just took the uh, control room would probably monitor the execute the running of a satellite right how it is going on whether it's orbiting around the earth or whatever the uh, planet it's gonna orbit around is it doing that successfully are we able to capture the images or the data from it how is the overall execution going on right so in similar way we have a control room embedded within our blue prism rpa application and that helps us in the scheduling the maintenance and like logging debugging of uh, our bots and it's like a management layer which sits on top of the uh, of the rpa like the developed bot and um, it helps in proper functioning of that bot right so we're gonna uh, like today or this week we're gonna talk about how this control room comes into the picture and um, how do we actually make a robot run from from that control room itself, right? So um, in this, I'm gonna take an example um, of a bot which I already have in place. Um, uh, actually, sort of, I just created just now. But we're gonna deal with the creation of the bot steps later in the subsequent blog articles. And here, we are only concerned with how the bot is executed. So um, having said that. I have an object diagram, which what it does is um, it launches an application and um, enters the credentials, sign in and uh, option number, go into blah, blah, blah. It's, it's an order entry system, so it's gonna submit an order. I'm just gonna run it to showcase how it works. And to do that, I'm gonna click on go button here. It's here. and it submitted the order as well right so that's how the overall execution is it went into the order application system it uh, entered the credentials signed in added an option number which was one to whatever it was you can probably rewind and see it again uh, went to the proper screen where the order entry needs to happen then it enters the details of all those uh, like what's the product code what's the number of quantity or like the number of items needed and and, and cost of those items and and uh, some other details and then it submitted the order that's it right it's a dummy application so it's not going to do anything as of now and i've hard coded these details like every time it's entering only product 001 so you can imagine if there was an excel document where i could have just read the data and iterated through all the rows of it and uh, I could have, uh, let's say there are 500 products from product 001 to product 500. Then I would have iterated through each of those rows and like the first, during the first iteration product 001 would have, or, and its corresponding details would have been entered in the order application, in, in this order system, this dummy application. And during the next iteration product 002 and so on till product 500, right? So once we have the process in set, we have, uh, or we call it the object diagram in set, then uh, pretty much our work is done, right? And you can imagine the benefit analysis of, of such a small application as well. So when there are complex processes involved, it's, it's even huge, the benefits. Okay, so um, I've already published this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through the publish of this one uh, again, but, um, because control room talks at the process layer, right? So we did discuss about what a process is, what an object is, and uh, um, now the control room is sitting on top of the process. So it interacts with the process, and pro process may be interacting with the like underlying objects. So 
um, here is the process. I'm going to open it. And what this process right now is doing is it's um, uh, just uh, accessing the order system, uh, which is the trial one business object and its corresponding action. Um, if, if, it's, if it doesn't make sense, it's okay because we haven't gone to the control room yet, right? Um, this and these steps we are going to talk about later in subsequent de in our subsequent blog articles. We're going to discuss this in, in higher detail. So no worries there. Okay. But um, one thing we must know about is that to make a process uh, accessible to the control room, we have to publish it, right? Like object needs to be published to be accessible by the process. Similarly, process needs to be published to be accessible by the control room, right? I hope that hierarchy makes sense. So to make a process published, you can see there's a green tick mark here, which means it's already published, but I'm going to show you. We always have this uh, rectangular uh, box on each process, any process that you're going to create, it's going to always accompany this. And uh, there's also going to be a start um, like stage, uh, which cannot be, these two stages cannot be deleted at all, but um, an additional information for you guys. But if you open this rectangular box, right, then at the bottom, you have this publish this process to control. You just, you just have to check mark this checkbox. Hit OK. And uh, now this is published. You can close it. Well, if I had made any changes, it would have made more sense, but it's OK. Now, this is the studio, right? Below the studio is where we have the control room. Once you go to control room, the published processes are available in here, in this panel. Now, all you got to do is um, select this particular process by just clicking on it and drag and drop it to a resource. As soon as I did that, right, that means I'm assigning this process to this particular machine. I have discussed what processes are, what resources are, and what environment is in the blog article. So if you haven't, please do check that out in the description of this video and, uh, you know, uh, go through the whole article because that's the legible sequence. I always, I couldn't emphasize more on this that always go through the blog article first and then the YouTube video because that's going to be an additional step. So, uh, and it's gonna like validate or stamp on your learning. It's like, okay, yeah, whatever I learned, whatever I understood, yes, that works based on this video, right? So, okay, either ways, this is done. Now I have this uh, particular session of this process and I've selected this. Currently, whenever it's created, whenever a session or an instance of a process is created, it's in pending state. So you, there are two ways to start a process or an instance of a process as we call it. Either you click on this start selection, which is like all the ones that you have selected, you can just start them or simply right click and start. Let's probably do this. I'm starting it and uh, you can see it has been terminated. That means there is some issue something like connection issue, something happened because of which it was not able to access this particular instance or something like that. So if it would have worked successfully, then the status would have been completed. And if it is terminated, that means something actually happened. Some abrupt termination happened. There is also like, um, what you can do is, um, Sometimes uh, we're going to talk about this when we'll be talking about the exception handling, but uh, you may want to mark some of your work as exception and continue the rest of the execution. That is for an example sake, like um, we were talking about 500 products that need to be entered in, the, in this order system, right? In this order application, this dummy application. Now you're starting from product 001, right? And you can imagine, let's say, uh, product 273 had some issue. 
So you wouldn't want to terminate the whole process and uh, leave all the subsequent after 2273 or from 274 all the way to 500. You don't want to leave all those products as is. You may want to mark that as something that you may want to look up later or probably through some manual intervention and continue with the rest of the processes, right? That way, uh, even if manually something needs to be done, it would be one out of 500, right? And the fraction would be one out of 500 of the actual initial work. And uh, that's the legible approach. So, you know, we can mark them as uh, something what we call as an exception. And if we would have marked something as an exception, then the status would have been shown as exception instead of terminated. But terminated means something wrong happened. So to debug this, to see what exactly was the was went wrong, you can always view the log. And um, there was some internal error, right? So it was the enter credentials, this stage, enter credentials stage, was not able to match any uh, item. That means there is some issue with identification of the log, like user ID and the password fields, right? Preferably, I think the user ID field itself. The RPA bot was not able to um, successfully identify the user ID field where it had to enter the user ID, right? So you can try running that again, or you can simply just, so see, I tried to start this one again, it won't because this one is already terminated. So you have to create another instance and you have to try that out, but it is going to be the same. The answer is going to be the same. So start the selection. Again, terminated, right? So it's not able to identify the user ID or the password. So what you can do rather is simply go here and go to the process and it will open the process for you, right? Usually, uh, because this process is fairly straightforward, it's simply just calling in a complete object and everything we have done is at the object level itself. That is not the legible approach. You may want to have like the actual computation and stuff involved at the object at the process side, sorry. And uh, um, when you have to interact with the external application, then all those processes, all those steps need to be at the object level, object layer. So let's go to the object open it up and uh, what I would do is I would simply close this running instance and I would try to run this again. Okay, this didn't help, sorry. I meant the action page. So launching is happening, but it, in terms of the BP and the password and everything, uh, it's, it's, the, it's, it's putting that in. Everything seems to be going okay, right? But when we're running it from the control room, that's not happening. So what you may want to do is one more thing, one more quick check. So at object layer, this program is running fine, right? Close this, go to this process, open it up again in case it's not open already. Okay. Let's try to run it at the process level. See, there it is. So uh, in here, the enter credentials is not being able to identify the UI element. So what we're going to do now is there are other steps, right? We also talked about this before stepping. So I'm going to the stepping, I'm launching the application. Yes. I'm trying to enter the credentials here. It is working just fine, right? So there's some issue. What you may want to do is you may want to identify these elements again, or you may want to, um, like, let me tell you, this is completely, as I would say, uh, okay, okay. The uh, RP application side issue, but what I would do is I would select the action two again from the trial one, right? Hit control S, save the changes, probably make it a little faster at the fastest so that does, we don't have to wait too much. If it is still having the issue, you may want to reattach. You may want to re-identify the elements and you may want to see how that works. But in terms of the control room, that is how it is, right? You understood the processes, you understood the resources and you understood what is consistent, what is the constituent of uh, the environment panel as well. And we can view logs, we have to publish 
and that's that's actually a problem which many people face we have to publish the object as well as the process right to make it and usually a process is published when it has been thoroughly regressively tested right you don't want to publish a process just like i created a process right away and just published it because i had to make it accessible by the control room and showcase my today's demo but usually there is a lot more stuff involved than this right so um that's where control room is i think uh, we are good for this week please let me know your thoughts um through your subscriptions through the comments on the blog article as well as on uh, the youtube channel i have a pro rpa named facebook page a facebook group and um you know i have a mailbox which is info@proarpa.com so if you have any ad hoc concerns please feel free to reach out to me if you want to go through the tutorial through a book uh, you know like if you like the way this has been taught so far then uh, in pretty much the similar fashion i have used uh, uh the content for my books which is available on amazon across all marketplaces whether it's india us spain france italy you name it and uh, the book is called crispr learning series so please feel free to check that out as well we have crispr learning series for ui path for blue prism even for service now which is an it service management tool and i have um the video tutorials on udemy and skillshare with exactly precisely the same name crispr learning series as i call it so please feel free to check that out as well and happy automating thank you very much goodbye